How the Grinch Stole Christmas is one of the most iconic things about Christmas, whether it be reading the book or watching the movie. So it is now time to rank all three How the Grinch Stole Christmas movies and that other thing from the worst to the best. <laughs> In last place at number four, by a landslide, by a country mile, I will say, is the mean one. Ugh. Uh, remember when I was referring to the uh, other thing? This is it. Oh my lord. I was going to do a versus episode of Wayne the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and the Mean One. I decided to cancel that one because both of these movies are so bad. This might now, that I think about it, be the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. I'm telling you everything about it. They turned the Grinch into a horror icon, and, I mean, if they executed that right, it could have worked, Um, because something about the Grinch feels like you could actually get away with that with uh, how he hates Christmas and, like, use some pun things, but they played the thing, just like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, dead serious other than like one or two scenes where the Grinch like makes a little joke but even then I still don't care so uh everything about this movie is awful the acting is terrible especially the person that plays Cindy Lou Who I have no idea did they pluck her off the street or something without any acting lessons she is awful as an a a actress she is terrible I think that the CGI oh good lord they say that the Grinch's heart is three times too small no the budget for this film was three times too small. The CGI in this film is quite frankly offensive. That like the amount like it is I cannot believe you can make CGI that is this bad. Like it is so unbelievably terrible. Like everything about this film is bad. There's not a single redeeming quality. Like, all the characters are characters. The only one that I can say I would mildly enjoy is the cop. And even then, I still, out of desperation, would say I don't like him be just because I don't want to give this film a positive. It is that bad. Everything. The the gore's unimpressive. The, st the, uh, the story is uh, terrible. And the pacing is awful. And, like, the way that they kill the Grinch... Uh, is an awful way to kill him because they, well, A, the fact is they say that his heart is three times too small, so then as soon as he uh, stops and, um, and his heart starts to grow again, it blows up. Are you kidding me? The, if, it, if it blows up when his heart grows, wouldn't that mean that the other three movies that do that where his heart grows three times, wouldn't that mean that they would also have, wouldn't that mean that also their thing would, sorry, wouldn't that mean that their hearts would all ready explode? It is the most idiotic decision I've ever seen in a movie. And believe me, I've seen some pretty idiotic things to do in a movie. That takes the cake. I cannot believe they tried to justify that. At first, I thought that Cindy Lou who shot him, but apparently his heart blew up. Or that is the most stupid and worst possible way to justify it. I think everything is awful. And if... It's just I I have no idea how you could go and make a film this bad. There is no way they were intending to make a good film, no way. And like I think the actor that plays the Grinch is mildly good. He plays Art the Clown in the Terrifier film, so he can be terrifying, no pun intended. Uh, but uh, because if you know what Art the Clown looks like in Terrifier, whoo, he is terrifying. And believe me, and I can tell you. One of the things that just really aggravates me is that you go from Terrifier with David Howard Thornton, which I believe is the name of the guy, uh, yeah, uh, uh, who I've seen clips of Terrifier and never saw the movie because a I heard it was I because I heard it wasn't very good. I heard the se the sequel was good, but still, uh, I just never got onto it. But I've seen clips of uh, what Art the Clown does in Terrifier. The practical effects are amazing in that like you can tell that this blood is really decent that it is great practical effects you then go to this and it is some of the worst cgi i have ever seen put to film it is that bad it stinks it is so bad i absolutely hate the movie so it is easily easily by a landslide in last place in third place 
is How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 2000. I'm sorry, guys. I had to try it. I mean, I come on. I have to admit that was pretty good for an accent of what Jim Carrey does. But anyway, there is a dominating leap in quality from number four to number three in the sense I actually really enjoy this film. Meanwhile, the mean one is probably the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. So just know I love this movie compared to that one. I still actually really enjoy it. So just know I mean no disrespect. So I'm super angry that I have to even put it next to the mean one. It is that bad. So, anyway, uh, this was my favorite at one point, and so I have a lot, I think it's very funny, I think Jim Carrey is really funny as, uh, the Grinch, he's, uh, like that kind of person that was on fire when it came out, like, the 90s was, was basically Jim Carrey, so he had Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, he had Liar Liar, he had Ace Ventura 1, Ace Ventura 2, The Cable Guy, this guy was on fire. Fire, I'm telling you. So, uh, I mean, there was no surprise probably that he would get another comedic role of the Grinch. And I think that he's really fun in this. Uh, so I think that he's really funny in just the sense of how he... I'm trying to think how to say this, but uh, I think that he's funny in like the way that he does some of the things like... Uh, I like how he like talks to himself at times and like uses the echo to talk to himself. It's pretty funny. And uh, I think that the... I, I mean, I know that uh, Jim Carrey did go through hell to make this movie because if you know the behind the scenes, it was horrible to have to wear that suit because they had to like, I think they like used cow fur or something to put on him. I can tell you it was a miserable experience for him. He hated it. So I am tempted to put up higher. I'm not going to, but I will say I really enjoy this movie. Which is, which is what aggravates me the most. I have to put it up next to a film as bad as the meme one. I'm going to be talking a lot more about the meme one, just so you know. I will insult that film any chance it gets. I could I could bring up like a random film. I could probably still uh, find a way to uh, insult the meme one. I'm smart when it comes to that type of thing. But I think that the character arc they give the Grinch is fun. I, I think that uh, in the context, I think that Jim Carrey's trying to play a bit more of a tough version of the Grinch. Like in the first... Like in the original one and in the one from 2019 that we have not talked about yet, either of them. So you can tell that he's a lot nicer as soon as he turns to the good part. At this one, uh, when uh, when uh, Max tackles him uh, and he, uh, when he like tackles him um, to uh, just like to be nice uh, after his heart grows three times, uh, it... You do see that uh, he he's like uh, uh he uh he, you can tell that he was being nice and then uh, then uh, he's like okay I've had enough okay no no max 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 and then he like kind of loses control again it's like he's still kind of the tough version which I think that's what they were going for but I think that uh, I think it I think it goes a bit too crass with the humor sometimes or mean spirited at times and I think there's like a partial filter on it that they use that makes it hard to see and it just feels kind of weird at times so I. I'm not that big a fan of that part about it. I think that of all the versions of the Grinch, this is by a landslide the funniest. He is a really funny Grinch, and I think that it's hilarious seeing a lot of his things, um, especially the thing that he does where he's like uh, has the hat on and he's like talking to Max. I believe that he was actually uh, pretending to be the director of the film at one point, and apparently the director thought it was really funny. So I did really enjoy that scene of it, and so I would recommend this film just... I am... Jim Carrey, if you ever watched this, first of all, big fan. Second of all, I am so, 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 so sorry that I had to put this film next to the mean one. Because believe me, this is one trillion times better than the mean one. I am so sorry about that. You deserve none of the respect. Believe me, I love... All of your films I've seen so far, so believe me, I am so sorry that you had to have this film next to the mean one, but I do really enjoy this film. Our runner-up is Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Hear me out. I know this is a classic. I am not here to disapprove the fact this is a classic. Uh, this is definitely a great movie. Uh, I think really what keeps it back is I'm uh, what you will see in first place, spoiler alert, is a theatrical run of a movie that actually is um, a long movie. You're comparing it to like a 20 to 30 minute long 
short thing that's like, it's quick, it gets in, it gets out. It's uh, probably more rewatchable than the one I have in first place. It's iconic. It uh, just shows the Grinch in everything that, like, makes him just so iconic with, like, the character arc that they give him. And it feels very much like a... Something that they would make back in the 60s. I don't think you can make something like this nowadays. And, like, this type of... Like, this type of movie, it's complicated to explain. But I think that some of the designs are a bit faulty. Like, one of the things that's always bothered me is... Where are the... who? Where is Cindy Lou Who's legs in this? If you look at the poster right now, she has no legs. Or at least they're hidden behind that. What is that, anyway? It just... That's always something that I'm like, are you kidding me? So, I have a lot of fun with this movie. It's it's pretty... It's definitely the most iconic of them. It's If you think this is the best one, I am not here to disapprove that at all. This is a proven classic, and it's a great movie that... Well, not really movie. It's a great, like, short type thing. I cannot... I feel weird calling it a movie simply because it's not very long. It's only, like, 20 to 30 minutes. It gets in and gets out. It's a quick little ride, so you have fun with it. It's just, uh, also, we, I will also give a reason why I have my number one in number one place, or first place, or whatever you want to say, but it's an iconic movie, and I do have a lot more fun with it, and this may be the shortest of all the ones I'm talking about, mostly because it's the one that, because of its runtime, I had the least amount of things to say about it, because even, uh, ugh, the mean one. <sighs> I remember that movie. I hate it. But anyway, uh, at least at least that one I at least can hate on it in, in a lot of ways because it's longer, which I hated. That it had to be like an hour and a half. Boy, that was hard to get through. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is only like 20 to 30 minutes, so it's only just like a shortened version of what we know, which is basically the version that we know. Only a lot of things like to add in a bit of filler. So I do have a lot of fun with this movie. Just... I, I will say I like one a bit more. But for me, coming into first place, I am going to be giving it to Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch... Well, I mean, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch from 2019. For uh, one of the reasons that this is is nostalgia, I actually got to see this movie in the theater, so that also plays a key role in it. So, I mean, I got to see... Uh, when I see a movie in theaters, I'm usually grateful for it, like... It's Jurassic World Dominion. Say what you want about the film I got to see in theaters, so uh, I have a bit more fun with it than most people. I get it. Hot take. I know all of you are wanting to burn me for that one or do anything to me, but I enjoy it for the most part. It has flaws. I won't deny it. But I think that this one, it takes the character arc to another level in this one. I think the Grinch is utilized very well in this one where you slowly can tell he's changing, even with things like, uh, I think it's Duke. The, uh, the, uh, thing, uh, the reindeer, he is a, uh, like, when he allows him, he's like, you know what, no, you can go, uh, be with, uh, those other ones. You can tell he's, he has light in him, but he's not full on cold, like he was kind of in Jim Carrey's version. He has, um, he has a heart, he just doesn't want to admit it. And I think the comedy, this has the, some, this might have the best version of the comedy. It has the most heart of all of them. And I think the animation in this movie is fantastic. I think Max is a great side character that's really funny at times. And I think Cindy Lou Who is also very likable in this one. And I think that she is a very good tag along to uh, uh, certain things. So I think it's fun. I It's just, it's just a really decent animated movie that uh, I get uh, people have their problems with. I actually really enjoyed this one. Like I said, again, I saw it in theaters. I'm partially nostalgic. So... You can hold that against me, whatever you want. I don't care. I have the right to my own opinion. That's why I started this channel. And if you don't like it, then why are you still subscribed to me? Wait, did I just tell someone I'm subscribed? Never mind. But anyway, this is a this is a really good movie, and I think it starts to slow down a teeter. I think it teeters down a bit in the uh, third act because I think that the first two acts kind of show us. Uh, it kind of shows us uh, it glimpses of what we see in the other one, but the first. Two acts mostly give us new stuff that we had never seen before, and it's just so cool. And the third act feels like when he's like doing the Santa thing, it feels like we've seen this before, but it's still fun. So I think this is my favorite version of The Grinch. It is the most, it's 
it's de- it debatably is my the most rewatchable. It's between this one and the original. It might be more rewatchable because the heart that it has and the humor, and and another thing that uh rises it over at least in this one, Cindy Lou Who you can see her legs, so I don't feel like she's like just floating around or something, which still creeps me out. I get it. it's a weird argument. Hey, I'm weird. Leave me alone. So anyway, I just have a ton of fun with this movie, so I get it, I'm nostalgic, but hey, I don't care, so in my opinion, my number one Grinch movie of all time is The Grinch from 2019. There you have it, everyone. There's my ranking of all four Grinch movies from the worst to the best. In fourth place, by a lot, is... The mean one. In third place is Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 2000, the one with Jim Carrey. In second place is Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original from the 1960s. And in first is Dr. Seuss's The Grinch from 2019. And I know I'm a, I'm probably a bit foggy because I really think that a lot of people are going to be angry that the original is not in first place. This is just my opinion, guys. If you don't like it, find some other video where you do agree with my opinion. I have some very generic opinions that a lot of people will agree on. So you have some other options, too. So, But anyway, that is my rank. Give up. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already. I'm actually at like 340 something subscribers right now i am doing great thank you all so much this is such an achievement and i will be doing a special celebration for 350 with a live stream uh called the keep watch burn type thing where if you know what keep watch burn is it is essentially where you keep a movie you watch a movie and you burn a movie and if you are in the q a you get to drop the movies like you get to tell me Keep watch burn like for example John Wick Chapter Two, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and Terminator Two, three random movies. I just um am telling you you could uh put that in there and I would have to keep one, watch one, and burn one. So make sure to stay tuned for that and make sure to follow me on Letterboxd for some early lists and also just uh helping me out with uh getting another follower on there. So the link is. Uh, in my channel, in my channel place where you can find it, so it'll tell you my link, so you should be able to see it. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a good one.